Okay, with a few minutes for people to come in or not? Yes. I can see. Um, we have people start, uh, joining already, so. Okay. Yes. Then, good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our um, little webinar on the IHS um, PhD program. We very much uh, would like to thank you for being patient while we were navigating a few technical issues, but it's only two minutes later than normal, so I think that is absolutely acceptable. What we'll do in this program today is we will talk you through the details of our PhD program, and uh, we'll do that. Um, we'll, we'll run through the slides fairly quickly so that it won't get too boring for you guys. And after that, then there will be ample room for you to ask questions to me or others of the team who are all present here today. And you can also leave your questions in the chat. And if you do so, uh, please then also, for our own information, it would be really great if you could state where you are from so that we have a, a bit of an understanding where everybody is diving in from. That would be absolutely great. So um, the program for now uh, looks as follows. We will do a quick introduction on the team. We'll talk a bit about what the PhD is about, what it is not, so what you can expect, what the PhD program looks like, so in more detail. And then in the second part of this uh, uh, webinar, we'll talk about the technical details, the an application admission, all the administrative things that you um, uh, you made questions about. And we'll wrap the webinar up uh, with uh, uh, with a short introduction from one of uh, the P current PG students in the program. That's unfair. You're not a current PG student. Well, Someone who just graduated, so that's even better. <laughs> Sorry, that's the doctor of Um So um, let's get on with it, I would say. This is the team. Um, in case you didn't notice, it, I'm the guy on the left, so I've been talking <laughs> right now. And next to me is uh, Annette van Engen, who is the research program manager and the program coordinator of the PhD program. Then on the other side of the table was Lou Lee, who is our research and PhD program officer. And Laurel Lupe is joining us as the admissions officer online. Hi, Laurel, good to see you. <laughs> and last but not least, not on this slide, is Min Chai, but we'll, I'll introduce her later on. So quick few notes about what IHS is like. IHS is, was established um, 66 years ago. We just had our 65th anniversary in Rotterdam uh, uh, following the um, wholesale destruction during post uh, so sorry, during World War One, And I just, it was established to develop knowledge on rebuilding cities. Over the years, that mission has changed because cities have been rebuilt and we have expanded in different directions. Um, and we, in the process of doing that, developed three different pillars, as we call them inside. We deliver education and some of the people who are online now will notice because they are alumni of our master programs or they are currently one of the master programs. Next to that, we have a research pillar, um, and that is the one that the PhD program falls into. And that is our colleagues doing research in all things urban, ranging from air pollution to social justice and housing and everything in between. Um, and the third pillar is the advisory pillar. And the advisory pillar basically is all the people who talk about, uh, or actually, you know, work with uh, people, with governments, with NGOs, and what have you not, to make cities work, as per the very famous yes. slogan. Now, you will, of course, be interested in the research bit. That is why you signed up for this webinar. So what I'll do next is talk to you, uh, talk a bit uh, about what the PhD program is like, what you can expect from it, and what not. So what is a PhD program, or what's a PhD degree, actually? And most of the marketing stuff starts with saying how great it is, but I want to start elsewhere because doing a PhD also means uh, sleepless nights, uh, lack of sleep, definitely lack of sleep. Uh, you will have to deal with criticism and lots of it because you will be challenged. You, you will um, experience that you thought you knew everything, but actually you don't know much and you try sort of to uh, yeah, talk, talk along, let's put it that way. Uh, some of us develop a ramen and coffee addiction, others develop a ramen and tea addiction. Either way, you will have some unhealthy life choices there. You will actually question all your life choices. And there will be so many deadlines. The program lasts for four years, sometimes five. 
And um, that looks like a lot of time, but actually it flies by. So there's a lot of, you, you, will, you will experience it as a very intensive, but ultimately also rewarding time. Now, if at this point you're still with us, and if you think that this is great, I like being challenged, and I like our ramen and coffee and what have you not, then let's talk a bit about what it actually is that the PhD degree. It's first and foremost, it is an intellectual endeavor. It is for you to deepen your understanding on a particular topic in a profound way. Uh, at the end of this trajectory, you will be an expert in your field, and there will be very few people who have the same level of knowledge as you have. You will be a real expert. And second thing is, the PhD degree is proof of you um, of being an academic, uh, independent academic or an uh, independent scientist, either way. So in contrast to a master's program where you just have to do the stuff that your instructor asks you to do, here you have to develop your own voice, which is great, but also challenging because it means that you will, you, you will guide your own learning curve much more than you're used to in a master's program. A PhD degree is also, uh, I like to call it an entrance ticket to the academic world. Um, it is for every academic job that you um, that you need in the world, you need a PhD. But these days, given that so many people have master degrees, it has also become more and more important in job recruitment, especially in high level jobs, particularly in administrations, but also in big enterprises, require someone to get a PhD at some point. All these practical things aside, I do think that a PhD is also a life-changing experience. You will be challenged by us, but you will also have to challenge yourself. You will have to go out in the real world, do things that are exciting and not always easy, and you will feel that you have, you know, you have achieved something, and you have you basically if you learn to know yourself and what works for you and what does not. And last but not least, I, uh, this is the one I like most. Uh, doing a PG means unlimited tinkering with the real world. You can do a lot of things if you tell people that you're a scientist. Mm -hmm. I know I've been to places I would never get access to until I told people that, yeah, I'm a scientist. I'm doing research. And said, so, okay, come come in and look what we're doing here, and that that there's the, the thrill of doing that is really unmatched. So these are the things that you can expect when you do a PhD degree. I want to say a few things more on this. Um, some of the people who apply think it's like a master's program, but longer. A PhD degree is not, is that, is not, is not a master's program. There is, in fact, not much of a program other than the program that you make. As I said, you're in charge of your own learning curve. We, we offer you courses and supervision, what have you not, but it's not a fixed program. It's also not a masterpiece, but longer. It is a piece of scientific work that, is, um, that, that stands on its own and that you will use to communicate with others, with your peers and everyone, and it's not just there to satisfy your supervisors, but it's something that tells the world who you are as a recent graduate, as a scientist. The third thing I would like to point out is that um, we got lots of applications where people say, I need to solve a practical problem in my city, so I will do a PhD degree. Here's the thing. If you need to solve a problem in a local neighborhood around, I don't know, green infrastructure or inequality, then please go and solve that in your neighborhood. The PhD is not necessarily the best way for achieving that. So I just want to highlight that, not to make it hard for you, but rather to give you a bit of a reality check of what uh, what a PhD degree can and cannot achieve. Last but not least, it is not easy. It is very challenging. But I think I said that already. Yeah. So what does the program look like? Um, we have a couple of examples here. Um, we have had some great many recent yeah, graduates. Uh, we still have more people in the program. Um, and I think uh, I'll, I'll just go over them very briefly. Yang Lim looked at uh, what smart city development meant in Korea and Seoul in particular, and what conditions are necessary to uh, to make smart cities work in Korea. And then we have Min Chai, who's sitting on the other side of the table, um, who will talk a bit about her research later on. That would be really great. Um, Tobias Held, who's from Germany, is doing research on the conditions under which uh, citizens are more likely to switch to, urban, uh, to electric vehicles uh, in urban neighborhoods. 
because that's the kind of transition that's ongoing. But in some cities it works, and in others it doesn't work. And then last but not least, Tanya Pico is doing research, or from Ecuador is doing research in nature-based solutions, and that is basically trying to use um, natural dynamics in order to craft urban solutions that are more sustainable and uh, better for society. And then on to the specifics of the program. As I said, it's a flexible four-year trajectory. I say flexible uh, because some students need more, some do it, some work a little bit quicker. Some have all the time to work with. Some people do it besides a job. But on the whole, it is meant to be for four years. Four years on the whole is the best estimate of how much time it needs to finish it. You will carry it out in what is a truly international environment. The city is international, but our our institute is very international. And in fact, there are not that many Dutch people working here. It's uh, one of the few people, and you too, by the way. Um, and the, uh, the PG program is very, very international indeed. Um, we have no fixed course program for you. What we offer is the kind of courses that you need in order to improve your skills given the topic that you're working on. So let's say uh, a lot of your research evol uh, involves GIS, then we would uh, recommend you to do a GIS course. Or let's say that you need to brush up your skills on uh, data coding, then this is the one that we will offer to you. So there's flexibility here. As I said, you shape your own learning trajectory. The courses are offered by the Erasmus Graduate School of Social Science and Humanities, part of actually is also our instructors offering courses. And that is also where the program is embedded in. We um, accept your applications on a rolling basis, so we do not work with cohorts. Um, whenever you're ready, whenever perhaps your funder is ready, then we will be happy to assess your application. This is what those four years look like in more detail. I will just keep it brief because there's a lot of administrative uh, details there. But uh, the most important bit is that uh, you um, understand that the first year is meant to craft the, entire, the rest of the program. So you, you get an opportunity to write up what you want to research and how you want to research. And at the end of the first year, there's also a formal go, no go. Uh, assessment in which we as uh, supervisors will look at the quality of your uh, proposal and see if you can continue. We do that not because we want to be mean, we do that because we want to give you a fair chance of finishing it in, within time. And so we only give you a go if you're confident that you can do this. And usually the, third, the second and third year are there for the uh, data collection, the analysis to refine and publish your research and then the fourth year is to, to wrap it up and make that uh, thesis done and then defend it, uh, which is really uh, a very great event, um, which you can show off to the world what you have achieved, especially to your family and friends, because they never understand what you want. Good. So that is the PhD trajectory. Now, overview, Laurel, we'll take it from here and we'll talk to, uh, talk to you about the application procedure. Thanks, Laurel. Yes, thank you, uh, Lasse, for this. Um, yeah, so now you have been convinced by Lasse that you're going to apply for a PhD program. Let's okay. just uh, turn to uh, the application procedure. Um, as Lasse already mentioned, there's no deadline, fixed deadlines uh, for the application uh, that you can submit. So you can basically uh, apply at any given time uh, that you want. So how does it look like? Um, if you're going to, uh, to submit your application, this is all online, all digital. So it consists basically of a, of a form that you can uh, find on our website. Um, there's a few information that you need to fill out in the form, uh, but also some documents, of course, that you need to um, prepare. Uh, so first, um, you need to submit a CV. Uh, this is There's no template or anything for this, but you can uh, just indicate your educational background or any professional background or any activities that you want to um, include in there. Uh, very important are your official diplomas and transcripts. So this means both your bachelor and your um, master diplomas. Um, and also a very, very important part of this is, of course, your um, research proposal. Uh, this is where you outline the whole proposal for your research that you want to um, undertake during the PhD program. And what's important to mention here is that we have a template. And we have a template provided on our website, and this is um, basically you need to adhere to this template. 
Um, also, there's a part in the application form where you need to provide your financial plan. Um, so that means, yeah, you basically indicate how you're going to fund um, your studies. And if you already have a support letter, for example, from your organization, so the company that you work at or any other kind of um, yeah, financial support that you receive during the program, you can already submit that so that we can see um, yeah, what your plan basically is. Um, then there's also a part where you have to submit a reference letter. This can be both academic or professional. Uh, that doesn't really matter as long as it can attest your skills. Uh, I will come back to the English language proficiency in a bit in the next slide because it has to do with uh, uh, your admission requirements. But at least uh, you have to also prove uh, your English uh, language uh, comment. Um, so yeah, once you have submitted your application, this will be forwarded to the IHS Research Comedy and Program uh, Coordinator, who will basically check your whole um, yeah, application package and your research proposal. Um, important to mention that this can take two to uh, three months. So just to um, yeah, take that into account as well. Um, there is no application fee for the uh, yeah for the application, so that's just uh, you don't have to pay for that. But uh, good to mention that we have tuition fee of twelve thousand five hundred per year. Um, yeah, and as earlier mentioned, you can apply at any given time. Um, okay, but before you submit your application, it's of course good to check whether you meet the admission requirements. Um, and so it's important to hold a bachelor's um, and a relevant master's degree from a recognized university. If you are um, unsure whether you meet this requirement, you can always email admission at ihs.nl so that we can check uh, together with you. The same goes for the academic performance. You need at least first class. That means a GPA 3.6. If you're, You can find this in your transcripts, of course, but if you're not sure, uh, you can drop an email um, to the admissions office. Um, yeah, what's also important is that your research proposal fits into, of course, uh, the IHS um, knowledge areas. You can find this on the website as well. Um, you can also briefly indicate this in your research proposal, how it fits basically into the thematic framing of IHS. Um, and then the last part is that you prove your sufficient English um, language. There's several ways you can do this. There are several countries that um, are listed on our website. And if you are from one of these countries, you basically don't have to um, a submit an English test. If you don't meet that criteria, you can also, well, it's possible that you have studied in English um, for your master's degree. Um, but then it should not be, you should not be graduated longer than three years ago. And in that case, there are alternative documents that you can um, submit in the form. But if you don't meet, meet those two requirements, then you need to do an English test. Um, and we only accept TOEFL and IELTS. And you can find the required scores also on our website. Um, but if you already have a relevant um, IELTS or TOEFL score that's no longer, that's not older than two years, you can just submit that already to your uh, application form. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so basically, what do you get in exchange of the of the fees? Um, we have a very professional academic guidance during your PhD uh, journey, where you have your own supervisory team. Um, they will basically help you and guide you through the whole um, PhD research process. You can also learn from IHS experts, of course, um, and as Lasse already briefly mentioned, uh, you can follow some courses, tailored courses um, from the EGSH that you can um, that basically align to the stage you're at in your research and that also contribute to the progress of your um, PhD research. There's also many resources, facilities and software support from both IHS and EUR wide. Um, maybe Min can touch upon these a bit later as well. Um, and what I think is really nice during our PhD program is that you have a lot of um, uh, possibilities and opportunities for participation. So we have, for example, PhD Colloquia, where current uh, PhD students present their research. You can learn from it, uh, contribute, and of course, present uh, yourself. Uh, we also have Science Sofa. So this is more where academic staff present their um, the things they work on. 
and you can join a lot of excursions and, and yeah, any other activities during um, during your PhD uh, research. Um, for example, if you want to attend some conferences or events or any other uh, things that you think are relevant for your research, uh, you can also receive financial support from IHS and EUR. Um, yeah, and the same goes for administrative assistance or any other facilities. Um, yeah, so good to mention is that IHS itself doesn't offer any uh, scholarships, but um, there's two useful links on the slide that you can uh, already explore some uh, funding um, opportunities, and you can also filter for your uh, own country to see if you uh, if you would be eligible for any of these. Uh, yes, yeah, so. Um, Let's say you are admitted to the program and you're going to um, discuss with your supervisory team how often you will be in the Netherlands. Um, this also influences the type of research um, of visa that you need, uh, but this will of course be arranged by IHS, so you don't uh, need to do that yourself. Um, if you will stay shorter than 90 days in the Netherlands, you need a short stay visa, and if it's longer than that, um, you basically need a researcher uh, type uh, visa. Um, what's important for the uh, visa application is that we'll need a financial proof. Uh, basically, that shows that you meet the income uh, requirement. But when it comes to that, um, the team will basically discuss um, how that will look like. Um, yeah, it's also possibly possible to bring your family um, with you to the Netherlands, but there are some requirements for this. Um, but this can also be um, discussed at a later point. Uh, so let's say you um, you are participating in the PhD program and you have graduated at some point. Then after that, you can apply for a search year visa. This is a one year um, visa that you can use to basically search for employment um, in the Netherlands. Yeah, that was it from uh, from my side. Many thanks, Laurel. And then uh, we turn our attention to um, to me, who is one of our recent graduates and who's still around with us, luckily. Um, can you tell us a bit about your experience and how it is to be on that side of the table? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, because I have so many things I want to share, so I will start it first and uh, start it directly. And because I didn't have a slide, so I will give a like, short uh, uh, introduction. So I will introduce my... Uh, PhD experience from the following aspects is like motivation, the PhD project itself, and also the academic uh, atmosphere in IHS, and also the life uh, in Erasmus University and also in uh, Rotterdam. So first, um, actually, uh, I did my uh, master program in China. It's a three-year master program. And in the last year, uh, I tried to find the opportunities in industry and also got several offers and do the uh, did the internships. And in the process of internship, I realized I want to keep learning and also uh, especially for the professional knowledge. So that's my uh, motivation to start to pursue this PhD. And I think this motivation is super important because PhD is not easy, and uh, this motivation gave, gave me the power to keep going Yeah, while I have some struggles. So this is my motivation. I think you can think about yours. Yeah, and uh, I think this is the first important point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the second one is uh, I, then I start my PhD project here, and the, uh, my topic is about the governance strategies effect of integration in spatial planning project. And during my PhD uh, process, I think um, the second important point is the supervising team, because uh, I feel um, both my supervisors they are uh, intelligent. Uh, responsible and supporting. So, for example, I experienced like a uh, change the topic, change the methodology, and also recollect data several times. So every time I have this uh, challenge or problem or questions, I can discuss with my supervisors, and I can feel they have so many intelligent ideas, and also they. Helped me in the first time 
So I think um, this is the second reason why in the process I want to give up. Then they gave me the encouragement and part of the confidence to keep going. So this is uh, these are the two important points to keep me going and also um, expect expect for the uh, academic and research related knowledge skills. I think they also support me in life when I feel stressed mm -hmm. and also they teach me how to work in a team. I think that's also important. And I still remember the day last year they told me, okay, this is your last supervising team. And this, they, they, they thought I should be super excited, but I was not because I'm happy, but I also feel a little bit upset because it means in the future, I like a bird, I need to fly by myself. And before, uh, if I have any questions, I can ask them and they are always here. So I feel, and also I realized this is a bonus when I, uh, I mean, when I uh, applied this PhD project, I didn't realize that this is the bonus. I look back, realize is, this PhD project will bring you many intelligent, intelligent and professional people. And uh, graduation doesn't mean say goodbye. And we never talk, we never work together. So it's like they will, they still help me and uh, we still cooperate. So I think this is a bonus to do a PhD project. And also when I have some problems in life, uh, for example, I need to uh, apply visa or uh, except the agreement or contract, I think my PhD coordin coordinators and coordination team and also um, management team, I think everyone, they I can feel they try their best to help me. So yeah, that's also important, I think, make the life easier. <laughs> and also uh, is my PhD colleague, uh, because we are very international and our colleague is also from international uh, background so we can share many similar things like a uh, red, red house or place in which them and how to take what kind of curse during the process yeah so i think i also got many supportive um uh, uh yeah from my colleagues and also now uh, we have like more and more hot hot luck it's like we eat together or something yes yeah, so uh, yeah, that's also helpful. And also, um, I think um, because I experienced COVID in the beginning of my project, so now I can see the changes. So the uh, now we have like more uh, academic opportunities like the size of our colloquium and you can um, talk with people from different background and I feel uh, I can learn many knowledge in a short time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, expect for this uh, academic uh, atmosphere. I, I realized Annette recently also served, served many other opportunities like exchange programs, research fellowship. So uh, there's also opportunity if you want to explore more or have other opportunities. Yeah. And uh, in the end, maybe I share the um, life here because PhD is not only about research, yeah, and we need a uh, like life and work balance. So uh, I feel the, uh, for example, the in the Erasmus University, there's like the sports center and there's many like clubs and uh, yeah, you can choose, or I can choose what I want to develop my hobbies. And also Rotterdam, I feel it's so convenient because I like travel. So I also feel it's easy to explore the Europe. Yeah, so I think, um, I think in short, look back, I feel the PhD life and work is not easy, but it's deserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mandan. Really, really thanks. It's really great uh, to give you your experiences. And, um, <laughs> You made it. I think that's a good thing. Thanks so much. Mika then will wrap it up for you. Yes. Uh, thank you all for the useful insight. So, yes, indeed, before we kick off the Q&A part, um, if you have any questions, so Laurel already mentioned, if you're not sure about your application, you can email admission at hs.nl. But we also have a PhD email for general inquiries and any questions that you might have for the team. 
and you can email them at phdattaches.nl. And uh, if you scan the QR, uh, you will also see our website where you can read more about the program, about the, the PhD uh, students and other research that we are also doing. And uh, lastly, we are active on all social media channels, so you can follow us on Instagram, on uh, LinkedIn. We share different content, uh, articles, research events uh, like this one that we organize. So it's nice to stay up to date and also in touch with us. And um, on behalf of uh, the team here, I want to thank you for your attention. And we can, I think, start with the yeah. questions uh, so I can kind of moderate this yeah. part and uh, you can address them. So we have a few um, and just to say that we have a very diverse audience from all continents. We have some alumni here, so really nice to see you uh, back. And we, I'm going to start with the first question, which is about background requirements. Um, uh, Chin Tan is asking, I have a Bachelor in Engineering, Master of Science in Development Practice, and a total of 15 years of work experience in the domain of regional development across central government, different state governments, as well as leading private companies and nonprofits in India. Am I eligible? Yes, um, I think this is, a, uh, this is a very specific question, and thanks for asking, Chin Tan. I would uh, I would say this is something we should discuss one on one. Uh, so please do send me a message or send a message to the the email address you just saw, and we can uh, look into uh, in this into more depth. We have very many different people from very many different places. So right now it's a bit hard for me to assist it directly, but we really happy to help you out with that question if you send us a, a quick message on that. Thank you, Lasse. Uh, then we have a few questions from uh, Amandas. Uh, the first one is, how to find a supervisor? Is it possible to find a super supervisor outside the campus, for example, from a campus from another country? So thanks for the question. And the, um, uh, the short answer is that this is always a bit complicated because the supervisor needs to have the rights uh, to carry out the promotions uh, at this university, and that means you have to be, uh, you have to work at this university. However, we do uh, uh, provide room for external members to partake in the team, in the supervisory team. So it's not entirely impossible, and there are ways of dealing with it, but it cannot be uh, the main promoter. And then I saw you have another question about uh, speaking Dutch. Um, no, it's all in English, so do not worry about that. You can uh, you can manage fine uh, with an issue. And the last one on um, the scholarships. Yes, I would like to refer to the link that you saw earlier on that Laurel had on her slides, and we can share it again, uh, Mika, yeah. where we can direct you guys to different funding sources, of which there are many, and that's why I will not list them all right now today because that would be a very long meeting indeed. But if you go to the links, you can see for yourself. Indeed, we do have long-standing corporations with Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you. Would you like to continue reading them? Or I, I don't know if I see them in the same order as you do. Okay. So but I see a question from Daniel from Cologne. Um, you ask if we can talk a bit about the theoretical perspectives, school fault, and preferred methods and methodologies prominent at IHS. Oh, I like that question a lot, Daniel. Thanks so much. And the, uh, we're, we're pretty pluralistic here, actually, because um, IHS is an interdisciplinary institute, and that means we have sociologists, we have people from planning studies, people who did public administration, so from other institutions uh, in German. Uh, we have people who study environmental sciences. So we have methods of theory-wise, we cover everything from action research to people crunching big data for climate change and air quality and everything in between. So we are not wedded to one particular way uh, of doing things. And then you please go. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, there are a few questions about scholarships. Um, do we want to address anything again or um uh, for all the questions about scholarships please refer to the link that you saw in the slides and we can put it up again for you uh, because that's a lot of detailed information and it would take a very long uh it would take a large chunk out of your time to go to every detail because every country has different mm -hmm. uh, rules and regulations so please refer to the link that uh, laurel had presented 
Um, indeed, and we will send uh, the slides and also there will be recording of the session so you can come back to that. Um, there was also a question if there is mentoring for the scholarship candidates, I think. Um, I mean, what stage you the question was, is there mentoring for scholarship candidates? Um, let me see. Is there mentoring available for scholarship candidates? So if uh, uh, I noticed that my it is not refreshing, okay, it doesn't matter. There is, um, if you have a nice research idea and you have a nice, and you have an understanding of where you want to apply for a scholarship, we can, uh, we do usually foster your research proposal such that it may work. Ultimately, the application will have to be done by you. So as Laurel already said in the in her uh, part of the presentation, we do not provide scholarships and we also do not apply ourselves for scholarships. All these funding agencies want you to apply. Um, so, but we can, in the background, uh, help you out a bit. And I also see a question from uh, uh, someone called Anonymous Attendee, which is a very interesting name indeed. And this Anonymous Attendee asks, uh, is there an age limit? No, there is not. Mm -hmm. There's no age limit. And we have people as um, young as you're know, just coming out of a, met a master, so they may be mid 20s, but we have also people who already are mid career professionals and they may be in their 30s or 40s. It doesn't matter. We care about the research, we do not care about the age. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, since you mentioned research, there is a question from another anonymous student. Mm -hmm. Can some extra effort? Put in the research proposal compensate for somewhat lesser grades? Thank you so much for that question. And um, we get this question every year, if I remember correctly. Um, that really depends. I say this, this is something that we would have to find out in an email conversation. So if you feel free to share your, your background information with us. On the whole, we, we are a little reluctant if uh, the grades are really low, and I'll explain why this is. So it's not us being nasty. It is because we experience that people who are not prepared for a science education, a scientific career, and may not perform really well in the program. They will struggle with the kind of questions. And what we do not want is people who arrive here and then um, basically feel like they're going to uh, a year of torture in order to make something work that ultimately won't work for them. And that is why we are a bit strict on the grades. And so it would be very exceptional uh, if we deviate from it. Not to say it doesn't happen, but we do usually stick to it. And it's really for your own good. And also I want to add to this, uh, there are many great careers outside of you know, outside <laughs> university. You do not always need a PhD for that. And since you mentioned grades, another uh, question, um... Kind of relevant. Can there be uh, exceptions in case one doesn't meet the Dutch admission requirement of eight from the previous masters? More specifically, if the uh, degree is from IHS itself. <laughs> we have we have had applications before that fall into this category, and so far no one has made that cut. So that's the short. So that's the short answer to that. Yeah. Again, as as with the previous uh, person who asked the question. Please do feel free to reach out and we can look into detail because mm -hmm. you guys have, you are very different. You come from different backgrounds, you have different uh, kinds of uh, training education. We can't answer that all in detail here, but we would be more than happy to have a closer look at, uh, at your background. Thank you. Let me see. Uh, another question for eligibility. Maybe I would advise uh, again to, to email PhD at IHS or admission because they are very personal and specific cases. So it's better to get advice uh, by the admissions team. Um, Can I ask you a question? Was, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Um, there was a question uh, uh, if I just offered part time PhD. We do. Uh, so that's a really great question. I think that's the one from Anish Yoshi, is that correct? Oh, there's another one. Okay, so we have two questions on that part time. Anish Yoshi, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. On the, on the part time. Yes, this is entirely possible, and uh, we will be happy to facilitate that. Um, we have a couple of people who do this. You will get more time, so it's more than four years, uh, but obviously we understand that you will not use those years in full. You will be part time working elsewhere, so you would get six years uh, to finish your research. So yes, that's entirely possible. I have to say it, it is a very challenging prospect because our experience is that work tends to eat up more time than it's supposed to. 
So if you decide on this, then you have to make very good arrangements with your employer uh, or whatever else is um, being the other side of the part-time arrangement, mm -hmm. such that you do get the time to carry out the research because you will need to invest time in it. Yes, thank you. Um, there is a question. Can you share what are the post-graduation placement sto success stories? Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you have to get track of it? Or? Um, I cannot think of uh, anything on the spot. Uh, well, it's before I mean, the PhD. We have a, we, uh, one success story is someone who gets an <laughs> academic job. And I think Nim is an example of someone who, who stays in the university and really has used that PhD uh, to get into, uh, to, you know, to, to uh, move up in the ranks at the, at the university. Um, there, there are quite a few people in our program who use the PhD in order to advance their career uh, in, at whatever organization they're working at. And I think this is something that is uh, quite distinct from other programs, that we do have people who use their uh, the stage of the PhD program and the degree as a way of uh, getting into the very senior ranks of their uh, organization. It could be in admin, often in business administration, but it can also be in, uh, in a private enterprise. So that, that that would be the brief one. We do have some testimonials on the website too, where you can check out what others have done. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, how to <clears throat> how to communicate with prospective supervisors, considering that we have communicated with several supervisors by email, but the response is very slow. Is there a solution to communication? Yeah, thanks for that uh, question, uh, Amanda. Um, normally, um, it, normally, Every application runs via the application procedure, um, and Laurel already details what that looks like. So if you reach out outside of the procedure and you randomly approach a supervisor, that usually does not result in much because most people may not understand why the, where the message is coming from and why it is so, because we really respond to applications that are submitted via the, uh, on, via the website. Um, and I saw other questions too on how to choose a supervisor at this stage. So if you apply, that's not something you need to worry about. Um, we uh, will manage that in discussion with you once we think that uh, you know, the proposal is good and all that. Then we will sit down with you and the prospective supervisors to put the supervisory team together. This is not something that you need to do before you submit your proposal. Maybe uh, just to add, uh, yeah, thank you, Lucy, for that. But of course, if you know anyone uh, that um, relates to your topic, you can always indicate your preferred supervisor. But indeed, it will really not be the case that this actually will be a supervisor because it depends on the your topic, the availability, expertise of your team. So, um, but if you know any and you would you would like to, then you can always indicate. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Laurel. That's a very useful addition. Thanks. Um, Another interesting question, um, as the, uh, the PhD candidates at IHS, do they need to stay at campus at specific hours per week, or is it flexible as long as they can achieve the research target? Maybe. maybe can <laughs> also flexible. share. I think uh, most of the time, maybe, uh, yeah, it's flexible. And most of the time, maybe it's better to work here, maybe have some discussion with colleagues, supervisors, and also, uh, for me, it's an opportunity to slowly know our colleagues. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, also, but it's flexible. And also, um, for urban studies, we need to do the field work. So sometimes we need to go to uh, our uh, case studies to mm -hmm. do the field work. So yeah, yeah absolutely. So yeah. completely flexible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, can someone who previously enrolled in a PhD program and chose to discontinue apply to your program? Should this be mentioned in the application form or CV? I think um, uh, the answer is principally yeah, it, this could work, but do do mention it and also do do mention the reasons why the original trajectory was terminated. That would be really great. All right. Um... Is there, okay, that's yeah. maybe something that we can address. Is there a scope for remote PhD with minimum attendance as a new mother would be difficult to attend from India? I understand, and thank you for that question. Uh, we've had another candidate, I believe, who was in a similar situation. Um, it is very hard. Um, and it's because it's not only in other country, it's also in other time zone. And so getting supervision, timely supervision online will be extremely hard in a situation like this. It's not to say that it's impossible, 
and it's um, and something that we can work with, but it's it's very challenging on the side of the PhD uh, students to 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 do this. Um, I think I would like to refer to what Min said earlier: being present, uh, even if it's for chunks of time, really accelerates your research. Um, doing it on the side from another country in a different time zone mm -hmm. is it, it really just there are quite a few practical hurdles there that make it a smooth experience. So we're absolutely not against it. We're not discouraging it, but it's not easy. Thank you. There was also a question about the research proposal. Thank you, Laurel. Uh, there is a link on the website where you can find, I think it's under the admission tab on the PhD page. And I think this could be the last question if there is nothing else for now. But uh, how is the housing situation for students, especially PhD students in Rotterdam? Maybe you can. Yeah, the first thing. The yeah. thousand. How did you find accommodation here? Oh no, did you have to sleep on the place? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a joke. Don't don't take that seriously. Uh, there are many like a uh, website, for example, and also um, for example, I live in a studio. It's uh, managed by a company called Root Them Tuesday, and I know other companies like our domain. They also have. Uh, so the first one is they have them. Some companies they have many rooms you can apply, and the second one is there are many websites, mm -hmm. uh, there are many apartments or maybe shared rooms, uh, and also we have a building from NHS. Maybe for short short term, if you didn't find a room in the beginning, uh, IHS maybe have some accommodation for short term, short term mm -hmm. and then look for new. Uh, yeah, accommodation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe to add on that, on the website we also have a dedicated page for housing in the Netherlands. So there you can find tips uh, on what to be aware of, some links for groups and uh, websites. Um, there is a question: Can we get the slides? Yes. So you will receive an email with the recording and the slides. And I just wanted to double check the chat if there are questions. Or just... Yeah. Meanwhile, I see another question that we did not answer. Someone says, "I have an MA and not an MSc. Is that a mm -hmm. little In principle, yes, can be. In fact, uh, uh, Min who's here has the same degree as you, so landscape architecture. So yes, it's yeah, possible. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, the rest of the in the Q and A, we um, answered them as well. Uh, we have a few minutes left. If you have any questions, now it's the time to to uh, drop them in the Q and A box. Um, if not, you can, uh, as we mentioned a couple of times, you can contact the the team. Um, anything else that maybe you'd like to share as final remarks that were uh, that was not addressed? I would very much recommend you to, uh, to think about what we just discussed. Mm -hmm. And if you feel you like the challenge, um, this is this would be an opportunity for you to really do something that is in many ways life changing. Um, mm -hmm. I do not like hyperbole. I do not kind of mm -hmm. personally exaggerate things. But doing a PhD at IJS is a life changing thing, mm -hmm. career wise, but also the ways the things you learn uh, you know, regarding scientific research, but especially learning about yourself. So, yeah. We are invited to, to come up with good ideas and we'll assess them. Thank you. I think um, there are no other questions, so maybe we can wrap it up now. Thank you, Laurel, for joining us online, uh, for the team here. For Thank you. Thank you as well for your time. And uh, we hope we gave you some nice, useful insights. And we hope to see you at IHS at some point, maybe. Um, so yeah, have a good day or evening, wherever you are in the world. Morning, morning yes, morning indeed, yes. Thank you. Thanks all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you bye.